All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we have a nice special project here. I'm going to make, uh, actually, whoops, wrong piece. <laughs> I'm going to make um, this mulberry uh, straight handled ladle. And as it turns out, I actually made a walnut ladle uh, similar to this that I featured on Instagram, and it actually sold at the uh, my final uh, holiday bazaar or fair uh, just over the weekend. So uh, this is actually going to be a gift along with some other spoons I'll be making on my uh, channel here, and uh, we're going to get started. So I'm going to actually do a lot of the process that uh, I normally typically don't show. Uh, some of the more, that's not tedious work, but, um, you know, I, I, I made a video the other day about some uh, spoon carving tools, some beginner tools and some advanced tools. And I mentioned about stop cuts and different things. So this is for people who aren't so familiar with the process uh, that I do, that I've learned from people on YouTube. So we're just going to get started here. And so I'm just going to take this um, hand saw. This is a uh, Baco, I think it's called Laplander or something. I think it was on Amazon, pretty cheap. Uh, any saw, hand saw will do. So what we're going to do is, here is the um, bowl of the spoon. And we're going to, in this case, I'm just going to make one slit here because I, I want to try to save as much of these side pieces as possible because I'm going to make, or if, if it turns out um, to be where I can split this evenly, I want to keep these two end piece, side pieces so I can make some smaller spoons, like some yogurt spoons or some uh, uh, teaspoons and things like that. So generally I'll do two slits just to have a margin of error when I'm using the axe, but we're going to make a slit here and a slit here. And the again, the purpose for that is so that when we're chopping the force of the blade uh, has somewhere to stop. So I'm just gonna, this isn't really necessary to do, but I just like to have something um, to kind of level it, uh, make it even. You just take a uh, square, and I usually just go about an inch above the bowl. Uh, hmm, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to, I don't wanna go much lower than that. Eh, we'll try it here, let's see. Eh. So I'm just gonna make a line here, just kind of going across. That's what we have, okay? <laughs> this is not going to be like a tutorial step by step all the way. I just want to, you know, again, just kind of show some of the process here. And can you guys even see that? Let's move you around here a little bit. All right, so we're just going to, well, I'll, let me just do it first and then we'll. Uh, That looks good enough for me to go a little bit more. All right, so that's the first cut, and I left not even a quarter of an inch. Usually I don't go that close, but I'm just trying to save as much of this as possible. And I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to cut this uh, slice into that side, so I'll be right back, all right? All right, guys, I'm back. So I've uh, made the two stop cuts. And now we're going to use this wooden mallet that I made the other day and a knife. <laughs> And we're going to use the knife as a fro, and that's just going to be to split um, as carefully as we can. I'm going to be very careful with this to try to save these two side pieces. So let me see. You guys can't see too much of that, but um, so you don't want to get too close to the template uh, in case it splits weird. So. Um, you know, normally I wouldn't try to save the wood, but just because it's, 
Uh, this is very unique. This is mulberry, if I haven't mentioned it. Uh, it's a pretty unique piece of wood for me. So I'm just trying to save as much as I possibly can. Oh man, it's always kind of hard or tricky trying to line these pieces up here. So let me just give me a second here, guys. Try my best to. All right, so there we go. I usually don't. Sh usually don't show a lot of this stuff because it um, kind of eats into the uh, video, I guess. I didn't really save that much of it because I'm an idiot, but that's okay. So just so you can kind of get the general idea, this is what you have. You can knock off a nice slice here. I can't really use this, but I am going to keep it. Uh, maybe I'll find a use for it. I can't make it really make a spoon out of this. Well, I'm going to try to split this split this other piece here. I'll do that off camera, but just to give you an idea of like what you can do if you uh, get a little better you can see there's a little knot there too so that may have uh, I don't know but so let me try to split this side and we'll see what happens I'll be right back alright guys I'm back so got a nice size here pretty much right up to the edge which is perfect uh, I'll have to chop away a little bit with the uh, axe here I'll do that on camera but just wanted to show this, I'm still not sure if I can make a spoon out of this. This is really thin, but man, this wood is so pretty. I'm just gonna keep this because I just can't throw it away. It's too, it's just too, it's just too nice. It's too beautiful. So I'm gonna keep this in my special, whoops, my special uh, scrap pile, I guess, if you will. And oh boy, I'm just gonna do a little chopping here on the side. So you guys can see what I'm doing. So now we're just going to basically start getting real close to this line here. And then we'll probably move on to the bowl, believe it or not, after that. So let's just do a little bit of chopping here. Hopefully you guys can see. I don't think you can see too much. Let me back this thing up a little bit. So I'm going to take this moment to just kind of talk a little bit. And uh, this is actually the first time I'm using mulberry. So this is, you know, a treat because we're all learning together here. This wood's a little dry. It's been sitting in the basement since I got it. But man, let me just look at this here. Ooh, man, I finished it. That's going to be a... Whew. Okay. So I'm just going to... be a little tough. It's the way it is. It's all right. So I'm just very, because I have not worked with this wood before, I'm going to be a little bit careful. I'm not going to be as aggressive as I normally would be with wood or woods that I'm familiar with. Oh. I am trying to watch my fingers here, of course. Of course, if you have a bandsaw, you could just uh, run that through the bandsaw. Probably wouldn't be a problem. All right. So I guess I should warn you if you stayed around this long, this will be a pretty long video as usual. I tried to keep videos at uh, ten minutes, but. I figure people like to see some of the work, so they're going to be long, unfortunately. We're getting there, getting pretty close. Okay, 
I think we're doing pretty good actually. Oh yeah, this stuff's gonna be tough, man. <laughs> Yikes. Alright, so I've got it down to a nice thickness. I'll probably go back and forth with the axe a little bit on this handle. But I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to set up the uh, shave horse so we can start um, hollowing out the bowl here. All right, it's going to be fairly, it's actually, this is actually pretty thick, uh, but it's going to be a fairly shallow bowl. Um, it's not going to be like very, very deep. It's just because, you know, it's not a very big piece and that was intentional. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's get started. I'll, let me stop here and I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. All right. We're back. So I positioned the spoon or the blank, if you will, on the shave horse. I'm gonna clamp that sucker down. And we're gonna use this um, Twicka cam that I mentioned in my uh, advanced tool section of my uh, previous video. This is the, uh, what is this, 50, does it say 50? Yeah, I guess that's the 50 millimeter radius. I thought it was 55, but maybe I'm wrong. I think it's 50. So I use this um, for bigger, larger pieces uh, in circumference. And you can get pretty deep with this thing. And it finishes really nice. So it's kind of like the workhorse of my spoon knives. And then we'll move on to something a little bit more delicate, the falset blade. But So we're just going to... Uh, just kind of use like a, uh, a rolling motion, I guess. Some people like spin it around, but I just like to kind of like shave little pieces off slow and steady just to kind of give you guys an idea. Uh, you, you know, many of you have probably seen me do this in some other videos, but um, just basically just you know, we don't have to get the whole piece in, um, just a part of the, the knife in there. Um, again, there's a, you know, million ways to do a spoon bowl, a gouge. Uh, I suppose you could use a router if you're talking about power tools and ads even you could use. Spoon knives. So we're just following the template, slow and steady. And that's really all it is until you get to the desired depth that you want. So I'm just going to continue doing that and then I'll come back when uh, this bowl is done. All right, we're pretty much done. Be right back, guys. All right. All right, guys, we're back. So right now I'm working at about 22 minutes of work on this bowl. And I'm going to move to another tool. And that's why I wanted to click on the video here. And that's going to be this uh, falset blade, which uh, it's this is how I'm interpreting it or how I use it to kind of like almost like a uh, uh, finishing blade or when the Twicka cam is... Uh, just a little bit too big. I'm having a little tough spot with this grain here. Um, so it's it's kind of like the tool. It's uh, I don't want it to snap. I don't want the uh, grain to snap uh, in a weird spot. So I'm going to try to move to this little um, spoon knife, if you will. It's a little easier to handle for this little section here. And I just want to see if this will work a little bit better, because this grain is uh, not, uh, the Twicka cam is not working with uh, this grain here. So this is a little bit of a, I guess a finer tool, I guess. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And I can hold this a little bit better too. And because this is such a square piece here and it's kind of uh, thin, I have to be really careful not to go too deep because I still have to kind of round this bottom piece off too. So uh, this piece is actually going to be a nice depth. So I'm just going to kind of use this as your traditional 
Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, guys, let me, uh... Maybe I'll move on to my, uh, I call it my beater spoon knife, which is the Mora uh, spoon knife. I'm just going to try to really quick uh, hog out some material because this wood's a little bit dry and I don't want that to um, damage my uh, Nick Westerman blades here. You know, it's, oh, man. Hmm. it's a little weird. Not really sure how to attack this. It's, it's like it's got me a little messed up here. So that's why, <laughs> you know, it's why there's never one tool to do the job uh, in most cases. It's uh, several or many over and over. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to go too deep there. I want to get this bowl out here. Mm, damn. It's green. It's like I, I, I want to go this way with the green, but I don't want to go too deep. So just another, you know, learning experience, guys and gals. <laughs> guy, when I say guys, I mean everybody. I don't mean just men. <sighs> All right. So I'm going to continue playing with this. I just wanted to share this little hiccup, if you will. And um, I'll be right back when I have a little bit more done. All right, guys? Be right back. All right, everybody, I'm back. And we have put this on this chopping block here. Pretty much finished the bowl. There will always be some very small refinements that will be done. But that's pretty much it. It's as deep as I can possibly go without going through, at least where I feel comfortable. So it's looking really great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to knock these corners off with the axe. One, two, three, and four to kind of start to get the, uh, the bowl shape. And that's what we're going to work on now. I don't know if you guys can see. All right, just like you can. So we're just gonna, let me see if I can even do that now. I'm just gonna be very careful. Let me take my uh, earphones off here. Oh. It took about an hour to do that bowl, believe it or not. I don't know why it took so long, but it's the thing, you know, can't really rush these things. What's going on there? Let me switch this around. My next uh, chopping block, I'll probably do a little bit better. You know, you have to, uh, and that's kind of the great thing about doing this stuff is uh, the first. Unless you're some kind of savant, you know, the first time that you do something, it's not going to be that great. And you make, that's why uh, the spoons get better and better as you make each one. Um, you know, it's all all learning curve every time you do something uh, for the first time. So this chopping block, I'll have a better one uh, the next time I make one. So Now this wood is a little bit dry, and also, um, this is the first time, again, like I said, that I'm working with mulberry, so I'm not familiar with it at all. Um, being very careful. Seems like it's very tough, that's for sure. And uh, I don't suggest you use any of the techniques that I use. Just uh, a disclaimer. <laughs> I'm sure there's far safer ways of doing things. Uh, again, words of caution. I've already cut myself several times um, since I've been carving over this two-year period. Recently, if about a month ago, I uh, cut my finger, 
how to get stitches. <laughs> so that's why I say, don't follow what I do. Sometimes, a lot of times I'll wear, actually wear gloves. They're not cut resistant, but I suppose you could take a saw and rip those, but uh, that's whatever you want to do. I want to, since this is the first time, I just want to get a feel for this wood. That's what you do. You take off little, this is what I do, you take off little pieces at a time, get a feel for the wood each time, see how it behaves, see how hard you can chop. Sometimes, uh, next video I'll do, I'm going to be doing a uh, spalted birch eating spoon, and you can't be as hard with that, so uh, that's kind of the great thing about working with Uh, woods over and over again for the same wood, same species, because uh, you can uh, get familiar with it and know where your boundaries are with it. So we're basically just cr kind of creating corners and then knocking those corners off to create a rounded effect. So you can kind of see here I'm getting more round. So I'm just going to continue doing that. Um, and when I have more done, I'll be right back. Okay, guys? All right, everybody, I'm back. So we're going to have to stop the video here and continue tomorrow. I got really tired. <laughs> and uh, this wood is, uh, it's, it's not super hard to work with, but um, it's also not green, like, green either. Um, it's not, um, it's a little hard to explain. So this is, uh, what I have so far. I did, did, I did some work on the shave horse and the draw knife. And, um, let me get another piece here. So I was trying to, you know, make as many pieces as I could with the mulberry that was gifted to me. Um, so what I did was I basically had a piece that was about twice the thickness and I split that in half to, so I can uh, have the ability to make uh, more pieces. And when you do that, uh, you know, you're, sometime, you're not able to sometimes, uh, for example, when I did that walnut spoon that was uh, featured on Instagram, uh, it's basically the same shape. I just, I trace a template here and I just freehand draw the handle. Um, it, it had more of a, of a bowl down here. It was about the same depth, maybe a little bit deeper, but it had more of a rounded depth. That's, that's because the log uh, was rounded on the bottom. So this one's a little bit flat. It's still going to be very nice when it's done. Um, and you can see some of the grain in here already. You got some silver or gray part there. Um, so this is just a very rough shape. I have some material to remove here. So we're going to go over all that uh, tomorrow. Um, and hopefully I can squeeze out the rest of the spoon in that video. Um, so here's what we have so far. I know it's a long video for part one. I was just trying to explain a lot of some of the process as I go through it for some of the newer uh, spoon carvers that may be out there and that's what we have so far all right try to do a lot, lot more refinements tomorrow it's getting there it's almost done so uh, we'll catch you uh, hopefully tomorrow on the next video guys and look at that green cool